Hello everybody and thank you for joining me in this new video presentation from ARIA AP Talk series. I hope you will enjoy it and join me here in my future video presentations. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. Today, I would like to present the data from three recent WITI ablations in three patients with ischemic WITI after inferior wall myocardial infarction. And based on this data, I would try to answer the question, should everyone receive an ICD after successful VT ablation based on the current guidelines? The first patient is a 70-year-old man with old inferior wall myocardial infarction left ventricular ejection fraction of 50% who presented with frequent repetitive palpitations, white complex, uh, white complex tachycardia, and no syncope. As you can see here, we have a clear VA dissociation and typical finding in AVR, which uh, clearly shows the ventricular tachycardia as the reason for the white complex tachycardia. In baseline ECG in sinus written, clearly we see the signs of inferior, old inferior wall myocardial infarction. And in MRI, we also see a large uh, scar area in the infralateral region. Looking at the coronary angiography, uh, mild to moderate stenosis, distal part of the coronary, in the right coronary artery, most probably was the reason for these infarction with a spontaneous recanalization. Uh, at baseline ECG, not only the VT was inducible, but the patient had frequent PVCs with the same morphology as the VT. This is the successful ablation site of the VT and also the PVC basal inferoceptal as depicted uh, also by the morphology of the VT and PVC. Compared to MRI, our uh, targeted uh, electroanatomical mapping showed a very small area, low voltage area. And this is, in some cases, we see that this discrepancy between uh, standard definition of low voltage area and what we see as a scar area in MRI. But uh, we also have to mention that in electroanatomical mapping, we only define the scar based on the voltage criteria. And in MRI, we have some structural definition of the scar area. Anyway, before ablation, the VT was easily inducible. And after ablation with, uh, uh, with uh, extensive stimulation using different basic uh, cycle lens and up to S5 for extra stimuli, we didn't induce VT. Here is the ECG before, and here is the ECG after catheter ablation. Now let's go and look uh, to the ablation in the second patient, a 76-year-old man, also old inferior wall myocardial infarction, preserved ejection fraction, left ventricular ejection fraction of 50%, presented with palpitation, VT, but no syncope and no presyncope. Here we see um, the clinical VT of the patient, also easily inducible during GP study with 500 basic drive cycle length and one extra stimulus with a cycle length of 480 milliseconds. In 3D mapping, the scar area was small, 14.2 square centimeter. Only one VT was inducible before ablation, and again after ablation, despite aggressive ventricular program, ventricular stimulation with different basic drive cycle lengths, 500, 400, and 350, and up to four extra stimuli, we didn't induce other VTs or the clinical VT. After reviewing the data on these two patients, now let's look at the current guideline. As you can see, in some patients with VT as the first presentation and preserved ejection fraction, if the VT is hemodynamically stable, I think like in our two first patients, 
which not only the VT was hemodynamically stable, we didn't induce other ventricular tachycardias during program ventricular stimulation, and also in electroanatomical mapping, the low voltage area was very small. After catheter ablation, we we did an aggressive program ventricular stimulation with different basic drive cycle length and up to four extra stimuli uh, even after isoprenaline infusion no VT was inducible so in these patients catheter ablation ICD or amiodarone are all class 2a indication and therefore after catheter successful catheter ablation we discussed um, with the patients and we avoid ICD implantations in both of them. Now let's go to the third patient and 40 year old man with inferior wall myocardial infarction, left ventricular ejection fraction of 45% presented with dizziness and white complex tachycardia. This is uh, the first VT inducible during program ventricular stimulation, which was also the clinical VT of the patient with a cycle length 380 milliseconds, hemodynamically stable. During program ventricular stimulation, we also induced the second VT with a cycle length of 320 milliseconds, and this VT was hemodynamically unstable. Now, let's look at the electroanatomical mapping, targeted mapping, just from the inferior wall which shows a much larger scar area of 41.2.8 square centimeter definitely larger than two previous patients with a lot of late potentials and also in this patient we successfully ablated both VTs and with the same protocol as two previous patients we didn't induce any VT after successful catheter ablation. But going back to the uh, guideline, we see that yes, this is the, was the first presentation. The clinical VT was hemodynamically stable. Ejection fraction was more than 40%, but the scar area was larger. And also we induced a hemodynamically unstable VT during catheter ablation. And based on this recommendation and regard and also having the age of the patient, which was 40 years in mind, we discussed the matter with the patients and recommended ICD implantation for him. In conclusion, uh, this was a short video presentation from three patients with different age, all after old myocardial infarction with preserved ejection fraction. The first two one, presented with one VT, hemodynamically stable, no other VT was inducible, successful VT ablation, and we discussed the case with the patient and we recommended no ICD for these two patients. The third one, also old inferior wall myocardial infarction, ejection fraction of 45%, in large scar area and inducibility of two VTs, including the clinical VT, but one additional VT which was hemodynamically unstable and we recommended ICD even after successful VT ablation. I hope you enjoyed this short video presentation and I would like to invite you joining me here in my future video presentations. Thank you. Mm -hmm.